Oh shit, I'm in the yellow. <laughs> I'm in the yellow. Y'all know what that means, honey. It may be a good stream, it may be a bad stream. We'll see. I'm in the yellow, but we gonna keep on trugging through. I hope you guys can see and hear me, honey. Happy Sunday. I'm sitting here pretty in motherfucking pink, bitch. Hey, hey. <laughs> Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good. Hey, how do you think we got in here? Oh, y'all starting with the super chats already. Okay. Thank you, little eyed. Um, he says, hey, T, I have to watch the replay later. Sending love and positive vibes your way from Denver, Colorado. Keep speaking the truth, dear. Thank you. You know I will. Like I always tell y'all, the truth does not bring people together, honey. It divides. Okay, and it shows you real narcissistic behavior. That's what the truth does. So thank you for the super chat, boo. We got about 700 people watching. We gonna wait, you know, we always wait till we hit that thousand mark, okay? Let's see. What's up, everybody? Shout out to all my mods in the house. Um, Tony Baloney says, YouTube finally sent me a notification. Okay, that's what's up. YouTube is finally doing their damn job. Um, Random V says, hey T, hi, thank you for the super chat, sis, I appreciate it. So I hope everybody's doing good. Oh shit, we jumping up. We getting up there. We got, uh 3,000 people already, and then the stream ain't even been on for a minute. We already got 3,000 people. How's everybody doing? So I am here, okay, somebody from Montana. I am Nut Bonner from Montana, thank you, I've never been there. I would love to go sometime. Thank you for the super chat. Um, oh, y'all are coming through with the super chats. I really appreciate it. Um, Money Madison says, hey, T, love you from Ohio. I love you, too. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming through. Uh, Kiki West 2001 says, I just got back from the gym. I'll watch later. I'm sleepy as fuck. Thank you for the super chat. You can definitely catch this on the replay. Thank you for coming through and showing love. Um, Shadow Bunny 11 sent $49.99. He says... Well, he or she, I don't know, sorry. Says, I love you, T. Keep doing your thing. Keep doing you. Thank you so much. I definitely will. You know I'm always going to speak truth to power, honey. We're not going to let nobody slow down nothing. They can't destroy nothing that they did not help build in the name of Jesus, okay? So thank you for the super chat, you guys. Miriam Quintella, thank you for the super chat. Um, she sent $4.99. Asia says, hey, T. Love you from upstate New York. She sent $4.99. Um... Sadata, I'm hot, says, I kept, I kept refreshing like a crack fiend. I know that's right, because y'all be fiending for my streams because my streams be jumping, and that's why people be mad. You know what I'm saying? Because the channel is popping. It's successful. People, you know what I'm saying, genuinely support. They understand the real from the fake. They understand integrity. You know what I'm saying? I don't bullshit. I come with facts and receipts. So thank you. That means a lot to me that people come through, and they, they see through the bullshit, honey. Um, let's see here. Melanin Gnome says, T, what do you think about Bubba Wallace situation? I'm getting the Bubby Smollett 2.0 vibes from him. I don't know. I've been hearing about that. He did produce a noose, but, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that later, honey. Um, Katie Young sends $14.99. She says, you all speak the truth, auntie. Sending love from Cincinnati. Always got love for you, ma. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. I mean, I ain't been on here three minutes, and y'all just been... Hit me up. I, I just really appreciate the love. Y'all know that's not why I do it, but it definitely means a lot to me. Um, thank you, guys. Um, let me see here. Shout out to Johanna. I feel your energy. You go, T. Rachel China says, just discovered your channel and podcast. I spent all week sipping tea. Thank you. I'm glad you just discovered me. I've been enjoying all the promo. People have been hitting me up like, I didn't know who the hell you was, but now I'm following you on Apple. I'm following you on Spotify. Your shit is real. My podcast was recently monetized, so I'm loving all the new traffic. You know what I'm saying? I'm speaking the truth. Thank you to everybody who listened to more than four minutes. As you guys know what I do on my channel to get people to go listen to the podcast because YouTube demonetizes a lot of stuff. You know, for everybody who thinks that, you know, we're up here just eating out for people, a lot of stuff does not get monetized. So I put half on YouTube and the rest goes on my podcast. So shout out to all the critical thinkers in the words of Miss Mona Simone, who actually used their critical thinking skills and went to go listen to the full podcast and understood where I was coming from and took away a positive message, which is that everyone, regardless of your gender, regardless of your sexual orientation, regardless of your race, respect is the key factor. 
Everyone needs to show everyone respect. I don't care if you're trans. I don't care if you're a, bi a biological male or woman. Um, I don't care if you're gay, if you're straight, if you're black, if you're white, if you're Asian. Respect is the key. If you want respect, you damn sure got to give it. Pure point blank. So let's go ahead and get into this stream. We got close to 5,000 people in the house. David Rivera sends $20 from Puerto Rico. He says, I love you, T. I love you too, baby. Y'all are y'all are showing out with the super chat. Y'all are going to for real make me cry. Okay, I want to get to this stream. Y'all are going hard with these chats, man. Thank you so much. That's why they mad. That's why they're upset. Don't nobody's chats and super chats and streams pop like over here, period. Um, let's see here. Uh, Famika Capricorn says, hey, lovely T, watch you all the time. Just wanted to let you know I will always show you love. Bump them other haters. Speak your truth. Love from Shreveport, Louisiana. I know that's right, baby. I love them Louisiana accents. I love them Louisiana accents. Shout out to my girl, Bondi Blue, okay, who reached out to me. You know what I'm saying? Showed me nothing but love. I love her accent. Her YouTube channel is popping. You know what I mean? So shout out to all y'all. I love y'all's accents for real, for real. So thank you guys. Um, let's see here. Rapcast says you have multiple outlets now. They can't stop you. Facts. Facts. And all the outlets are popping. You know what I'm saying? So thank you, Rapcat. I know you've been a day one tea sipper. I appreciate it. Um, Nick Orgora says, sorry if I mispronounced your name. Says shout out to you, T from Canada. You keep me entertained. Keep speaking truth to power. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Shout out to all my overseas uh, tea sippers who are up. I know it's probably, well, I don't think it's really late in Canada, but I know there's people, you know, who are watching from South Africa, from the UK. I really appreciate y'all. Um, let's see here. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Um, let's see here. Hey, uh, hey Zeus Milson, 99 honey. He says, thank you for being you. You are a blessing. Thank you. And thank you for being you, most importantly. Thank you so much for the love. Thank you for the super chat. It's definitely appreciated. We got 5,000 people in here. I've been on for seven minutes, honey. Y'all are coming through. So let's go ahead and talk about a few things, okay? So as you guys know... I want to dead some rumors, and I want to, you know, lay things to rest. I don't like when people try and spin false narratives of my character and who I am, okay? And I don't like when people try and manipulate people with narcissism and soundbite clips, okay? First of all, when I did my podcast, it was no disrespect to that person or anybody involved. All I was saying is that basically... You know what I'm saying? I've watched this person. I don't care if it's a drag or a kiki or just being funny. I've watched them drag biological women, and I've seen biological women be uncomfortable and be upset by those draggings. And like I was saying, what I would notice is that when it comes to anything LGBT or trans, you know, some of these same people get upset. And all I was saying is that there needs to be respect around the board, across the board. And I even defended that person using the um, the word fish. And I explained to heterosexual females that you guys can't get mad at that word because that's the word that they use in the LGBT amongst each other. All that was in my podcast. But, of course, you know, they chose not to listen to it because, again, we can't be so down for certain words like yes and yes honey and shade you know we love those words but when it comes to other words when they're not even talking to you, you can then pick and choose and get mad right so i said all that stuff but of course you know they chose not to listen and that's fine oh i hope my stream didn't go out okay no it didn't so anyhow oh damn did i get kicked off oh shit hold on I want to make sure I'm not kicked off. Hold on. Can y'all see me? Because, you know, when we talk about real shit, when it gets jumping, when them, super, when them super chats come through, it's all types of issues. I think I'm back, though. I think I'm back. Let me know if y'all see me. I think I'm back. Okay, I'm good? Okay, cool. And y'all can always watch the replay as well. And I'm also recording this on my OBS, so I can re-upload it if it's on some bullshit. OBS will record it with no issues. Okay, cool. So I'm back. I can see clearly now that I am back. Okay. So anyways, um, so I talked about that situation. 
Um, it wasn't meant to disrespect anybody, but of course the person took it as an opportunity to like, you know, just go in on me, honey, and drag me for the field, which I said on my Instagram, I don't care. People are free to. Because one thing about me, like I've been saying for years, I'm a commentator, okay? And I take my job seriously. And when you do commentary and when you're an opinionated person, you can't get in your feelings when people have a critique about you. You can't get in your feelings when people do commentary about you. That doesn't make sense. But what I notice is a lot of people love to do commentary, love to give opinions about things under the sun. And then when they get the even the most minute critique, honey, they get upset. They go, you know, ham. They go crazy. And it's like, but don't you do commentary? Don't you give your opinion? Why are you so upset? You know how many people drag me constantly? I don't go around flagging their shit. I don't give a fuck because I give my opinion. You can't give your opinion on things. And then when people have opinions of you, you get in your feelings. For what? I, I, I give my opinion on everything. So there's no feelings for me. There's no feelings involved here. You know, it's a bunch of nonsense. And it makes no sense to be in your feelings about shit that's untrue and shit that's taken out of context. To me, it's just childish. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you see how that person responds. What I said in my podcast did not warrant that response whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? But, honey, I'm here for it. Because like I said, all, all promo is good promo, honey, shit. So thank you. Appreciate you. Um... I hope it's not booting people out. Y'all good? I'm seeing people getting oh, people getting kicked out. Okay, well, hopefully y'all can come back. I'm going to keep going, and if I need to, I'll re-upload the full stream. So don't worry about it. I'm going to just keep talking, honey, okay? Yes, thank you. Last of a dying breed. So let me go ahead and say this first and foremost. And I have a bunch of receipts. I have, you know, screenshots and, you know, things like that. Let me say this. No one will ever make me walk back a comment. So to all you basic bitches who thought you could get into my DMs on this good Sunday and tell and, and, and send me all types of nasty messages and say, how dare you, you know, say that George Floyd and, and Rashard Brooks are worth more dead than alive. You stupid, slow bitches. If you don't have enough gumption to watch the full live stream and to get the full context, that's on your ass. But y'all would never make me walk back anything I said. If I said it, I said it. And I said it for a reason. Bitch, I don't scratch my motherfucking weave unless that bitch itches. And I'm not walking back shit. Because the people who watch my stream, the folks who mess with me, knew the context that it was stated in. And when they went to go tell the person who wanted to post the said, you know, the, the little clip. Like, yo, you're taking this out of context. That was part of like a 30-minute a, a stream, and that's not what she meant. Oh, the comments mysteriously got disabled. Oh, comments were deleted. Oh, people were blocked. See, when you bring truth and you speak truth to power, it irritates people's demons. So y'all can play sound bites, but I got my own sound bites, okay? So now, yeah, it was bullshit. We, we see what it is. We see what it is. For some reason, like, YouTube is, like, has turned into this huge competition, and I don't understand why. It's just never been that serious for me. I come here, we spill tea, we sip tea, we have fun. I don't sit here and knock other content creators and, and drag them below the belt and do all types of stuff. That's never been my energy, and I'm not going to start now, okay? I'll let the other people, they can hold on to that negativity and that anger. All it does is fester and, and get you sick, okay? I need my health. I need my lungs, bitch. Because, yes, I can breathe, okay? So, anyhow. Okay, it looks like the, the stream is going back up. So, we going to keep going, honey. Um, So, let's start with this basic bitch who came onto my Instagram. She claimed to be a tea sipper, but yet was trying to confront me about some dumb shit. And when I tell you, honey, y'all go hard. It's to the, I don't even have to defend the bullshit because y'all go hard and y'all break it down. So I believe this is the, the screenshot. Nope, it's this one. Okay. So this basic bitch comes and she says, I usually like your content, but what you said about jo the George Floyd situation and other black men that were killed unjustly was just pure disgusting. Oh my God. So then I said, I really should block you for this stupid ass post, real talk. And then, you know, in the words of my other, you know, followers that are on there, they said, how about you watch the whole video instead of a 30 second clip? That's the problem. You judging somebody before you watch the whole video. Then somebody else says, why are you here? Oh, yeah, I got my reading voice on, honey. Then they go on to say, 
She spoke the truth, and it's okay to disagree, but what you're not going to do is claim that she said that these men deserve to die. You're speaking out of emotions, not facts. Then they go on to say, did you even watch the full live? Because if not, then this combo is pointless. Honey, my tea sippers go hard, and I love y'all for it. I really do. And then I said, you see how these dumbasses try to switch the narrative without watching the full context? Shaking my head. <laughs> then we go on to say, I'm talking about uh, breezy, uh, breezyful art was going hard, honey. I love you, sis. She says, you are just really uninformed and drank the blank Madison Kool-Aid. That's it. That's all. And then somebody else says, please quote exactly what you didn't like, and I will politely tell you um, that you didn't comprehend it correctly. So, I, I mean, honey, y'all went hard, okay? And we're, we're never going to let somebody spin a bullshit narrative. We're never going to do that. So I want to go ahead and play y'all this video from this gamer. Um, he posted this back in 2017, but it still rings true to this day. Um, what I'm tired of is grown adults not understanding context and not being able to comprehend, but then getting emotionally triggered and wanting to, you know what I'm saying, come for me and, you know, snatch off my motherfucking wig off of some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to go ahead and play this video for y'all. I want y'all to listen to what this young man has to say because he's doing nothing but speaking the truth. So give me a second here. It's shocking to me that in 2017, there are people who will pass judgment on something without context. They will watch a 20 second clip from maybe a two minute long rant, maybe a 20 minute long rant, and then comment anyways instead of looking for the whole picture. If something interests you to the point that you're going to spend time creating a comment, then it should interest you enough to get all the facts. If it does not interest you to that point, then you should not be spending the time leaving comments. It's shocking how often things get taken out of context. The meaning changes so drastically. I could be talking to someone about pizza toppings and say, oh yeah, I hate beef. The context would be, I hate beef as a pizza The volume topic. is low? But taken out of context, it sounds like I hate beef altogether. This is something very basic and simple being taken out of context. Now extrapolate that to a more complex idea. It's very dangerous to base arguments around sound clips that are taken out of context. Which leads me to my next point about arguments. An argument is defined as a reason or set of reasons given with the aim of persuading others that an action or idea is right or wrong. If I'm going to argue that beef does not belong on pizza, I need to present ideas to back that up. I can say it takes away from other tastes on the pizza, for example. I cannot, however, say you're a girl, so it doesn't matter if you like beef on pizza. This is engaging in ad hominem, which means I'm directing an attack at the person I'm arguing with rather than the position that they too often do I see okay you guys so if some people can hear it other people said that they couldn't hear it um you'll have to just listen to it on the playback and I'll also post uh, the video in the description so you just have to listen to it on the playback but he was saying some real shit um you know I watch different gamer videos because I have sons so basically okay so you guys heard it so some people heard it some people didn't sorry if you couldn't but like I said it'll be on the playback um but basically, he's talking about how people will listen to a small soundbite and then take things fully out of context and try and spin their own narrative and try to start arguments based off of a soundbite, which is really funny. Um, Stephanie Brown sends $10. She says, thank you so much, T. Keep doing what you do. You look absolutely beautiful, my internet. Sis, thank you. Appreciate it. Sydney Plant says, hey, T, I'm here to sip. Here goes $25. <laughs> thank you, sis. I appreciate it. Um, let's see here. So... He was saying some real stuff. Like I said, if it's low, just listen to it on the playback. So, you know, a lot of people like to take things out of context, unfortunately. And if you are those type of people and you don't like to comprehend and you don't like to do your own research, that is your own problem. Those are your issues, okay? I'm not going to sit here and coddle grown folks and, you know, try to explain myself to people when everything is right there. So what I find very funny is that they wanted to use a 30-second soundbite from my live stream that I did last week that had, and when I initially responded back to the lady on Instagram, cause she tried to talk real strong and wrong, honey. So when I responded to her, I initially said I had 16,000 likes, but on the live stream, when I went back to check it this morning, it had over 17,000 likes. So let me show y'all what I had posted on Instagram. 
Come on, IG. I'm going to need you to get it together. Because you know my Instagram. Okay, there it is. So some raggedy bitch named Tierra Lovely or some shit. She sent me a DM just being super nasty. Doesn't know me from a can of paint. So I replied back to her and I said, so you're going off on me and wishing me bad based on a clip that some weirdo posted for attention. Did you actually watch the live stream in its context? I can answer that for you. No, you did it. <laughs> the live stream has over 16,000 likes, but you're crying about a clip that was taken out of context. You ma'am are a disgrace. You will get your karma because everything you put into the universe will come back to you tenfold. I said what the fuck I said, and I said it for a reason. Learn comprehension and context before you ever bring your low vibrational ass into my DMs to talk shit. I know y'all be gagging in my reading voice, honey. They be so strong and wrong, it's ridiculous. Okay. It is ridiculous. And I see YouTube is acting funny. Like I told y'all, it's in the yellow. So it might kick people out. But I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I'm going to upload the stream. Don't worry. Let them do what they're doing. So anyhow. um, So, yeah, I have to read her real quick because she's an idiot. So let me go ahead and, and, and break down everything into context for people. The stream that they're crying about that had over 17,000 likes. So if I was really saying that, you know, all black men are worth more dead than alive, why did 17,000 people like the stream? Okay, matter of fact, y'all hit like if you're watching this stream. So let me go ahead and find the video here. Because it's very funny that they chose to post a 30-second clip. But for some funny reason, they didn't post this clip. I find that very, very strange. Let me see. I got a bunch of fucking videos here. Let me go and do everything. Is this it? I think this is it. Thanks for keeping. Because I see some people saying, well, he deserved, well, he deserved it. it. He shouldn't have been cheating. cheating. Nobody, Nobody deserves, deserves death, death for cheating, death for cheating okay? okay? If that's, that's the case, the case uh, watch, uh, watch your words because your own damn husband or boyfriend could be cheating on you. That don't mean that they deserve death, okay? George Floyd may have been an absentee father who hadn't seen his older kids in over 10 years. That doesn't mean that he deserves death. So let me let make, make that, that clear. clear. Nobody's, Nobody's ex absolving, absolving the police of what, of what they've, they've done, done to either one of these gentlemen. What I'm saying is I'm tired of the mainstream um, the mainstream media trying to paint a narrative that's just not true. And that's fact. Okay, let me play that again because people are saying that it's echoing. YouTube is on some BS, like always, with my streams. So we're going to play it again because I want y'all to really get the context, okay? Thanks for keeping Because I see some people saying, well, he deserved it. He shouldn't have been cheating. Nobody deserves death for cheating, okay? If that's the case, uh, watch your words because your own damn husband or boyfriend could be cheating on you. That don't mean that they deserve death, okay? George Floyd may have been an absentee father who hadn't seen his older kids in over 10 years. That doesn't mean that he deserves death. So let me make that clear. Nobody's ex absolving the police of what they've done to either one of these gentlemen. What I'm saying is I'm tired of the mainstream, um, the mainstream media trying to paint a narrative that's just not true. And that's facts. It's just not true. Um, let me see here. Oh, no, you're, you're welcome. I'm definitely going to clarify that. Yeah, nobody's excusing it. Nobody's saying that anybody deserved death. So let, let's make that clear. All I'm saying is that he had a girlfriend. And, you know, a lot of people have been saying, free Natalie. She's about that life. She put in more work than the wife. You know, I want to hear from the girlfriend. That's who I want to hear from. All right, you guys, so you guys just watched that. So that is the context of the video, okay? So let me go ahead and break some things down to you slow bitches, you know what I mean, who want to slide in my DM based off of some bullshit that somebody else posted looking for attention. Um, when I said that these men are worth more dead than alive, bitch, it's facts, okay? It's facts. When things go viral, they become more of a commodity in their death than when they were ever alive. And that just not that doesn't just go for George Floyd or Rashard Brooks. That also goes for the females as well who have died and their stories have gone viral. Okay? Why when we say things like when Michael Jackson was alive, he wasn't dead. But when he died, oh, his catalog shot up. All his debts were able to be paid off. When Prince died, oh, his catalog shot up. 
Tupac died with less than $10,000 in his bank account and made millions in his debt. So let's stop acting stupid and acting like we don't understand context, okay? So now, let me show y'all this. What I also was stating in that video, like my tea sippers were saying, is that the mainstream media needs to stop painting false narratives and stop deifying these men because they're not slick. People who understand and who comprehend what the media is doing, understand why they're doing that. They came out saying that Rashard Brooks was a married husband. He was a good father. He was just at Wendy's. So this is the media propping up Rashard Brooks. He clearly stated in that interaction with the police that he had a girlfriend. Okay? We were questioning that on the previous stream. I said, well, this doesn't make any sense. Why would his wife send him out there? Why was he out there? He stated himself he had a girlfriend, but the media wanted to paint the narrative that he was married. Why? Because once they paint the narrative, that will have more people wanting to donate. The story will be on the news longer. That's more viewership for the news. That's more viewership for the news streams on YouTube and everything else. And then in the same breath, this same mainstream media was able to tear down his reputation by coming out and saying he has a white girlfriend who burnt down the Wendy's. Do you see the tricks that the mainstream media plays? But y'all don't, but you're not going to understand that context though. That is what I was saying when I was saying they should not be deifying these men. Had, <clears throat> had they just come out, <clears throat> excuse me, had they just come out and say that Rayshard Brooks had a girlfriend, then they couldn't slander him a few weeks later by saying that a married man who was a faithful husband and, and, and father had a whole side piece girlfriend on the side. So those are the tricks that they play. But when I call it out, y'all are upset? Are you guys dumb? Tell me this, okay? Let, let, me, let me just show y'all this. This is George Floyd's GoFundMe, okay? He had not one but three GoFundMes. On top of that, his sister initially asked for $5,000, and she got over $300,000 on her GoFundMe. There's no way she would have been able to have access to, to that type of money were it not for her brother's death, okay? On top of this, for all you slow motherfuckers who got so much to say, GoFundMe gets 2.9% of every dollar donated, okay? George Floyd's GoFundMe broke records. Let me repeat that. It broke records. His GoFundMe hit a whopping $13 million. Now, I'm going to keep it real, honey. I'm not that good at math. So y'all do the math in the comment section. What is 2.9% of $13 million? But y'all want to say that these men are not worth more dead than a lie? Are y'all dumb? GoFundMe just made the biggest fucking commission check they have ever could have made in their entire life from the death of this black man. But better yet, while y'all are talking and running y'all's mouth because it took place in my city, were y'all on the front lines? Were y'all out there protesting? Were y'all going to people's houses and calling folks and saying, I'm out here, there's grocery stores open in my neighborhood, what do you need? Let me bring it to the city for y'all. Because it's a lot easier to kick back and make fake narratives than actually put foot, you know, actually put your boots on the ground. I spent so much time at the memorial and at the protest that it wasn't funny. But y'all spend whatever narrative you need to spend because I don't have to prove myself to nan person on the internet. See, I deal in facts. I don't deal in innuendos. Okay, so they made $377,000. I'm sorry, not thousand, million. Excuse me, excuse me. They made close to $4 million off of the death of George Floyd. But you're trying to tell me he was worth more alive than dead? You must be out your damn mind. I said what I said and I stand by what I said. Ain't nobody ever gonna walk me back from speaking facts to power. So now, on top of GoFundMe making that damn money, okay, who else had a really big GoFundMe? Breonna Taylor. She received over $5 million in donations. 
GoFundMe got 2.9% of that money. Okay. Um, Rayshard Brooks, he received 200,000, uh, 232,885 dollars in GoFundMe money. GoFundMe gets a percentage, gets a percentage of that. So y'all are stupid as hell. If y'all can't understand what I was saying in my stream, that these people are worth more dead than alive. And it's sad because I feel like this. Why can't all that money be used to help people when they're in dire straits when they're alive? Fuck getting that shit in the after. We want that shit now. Why do we have to wait until these men are dead to help their families, to look out for them? Now, let's go ahead and talk about this young sister toying. Okay? This young girl was 19 years old, the same age as my son. This girl was homeless. She ran from her family because of abuse. Allegedly, the brother was abusing her, molesting her. She's been through a lot in her young 19 years to the point where she was having to sleep at a church. Okay? Anytime she would try and go and shower and, you know, spark up conversations with people and tell them her situation just to get a simple shower and a hot meal, these men would try and take advantage of her and molest that baby. So much so that she would sit on Twitter and tell people about it. Like, I've been abused. I've been molested. The same people that I'm fighting for, they're abusing me. Hold on. Let me pull it up here real quick. Is this, her? this is her tweet. She says, the same niggas I'm risking my life for are the same niggas who are, com who are convinced they are stealing away my innocence or my jewel, not knowing that I'm already standing on a rock. Therefore, I can't be broken or robbed. Okay? This was what that little girl was saying. And I call her little girl because that's, that's a baby to me. She's the same age as my child. Okay? This is what she was saying on her, go I mean, excuse me, on her uh, Instagram and Twitter. Why did nobody try to help her? Why was there no fun before all this? Because what I find very funny is once that young girl passed, all of a sudden, here comes the brother. The same one that abused her. She says, I'm sick. This is what her brother posted as an update to the GoFundMe. Anyways, to... Is there any way to get your local police involved in order to take it down? The rules of reporting... The listed family disputes and suspecting fraud is not legitimate. Her own brother, who allegedly assaulted and abused her, is benefiting from her death. And this is what he wrote. Hi, my, he didn't even put in sister. He just says, my Oluwa, uh, he named her a different name because her name was Oluwa Toyin. Uh, Salu, I am the brother, oh, okay, I'm sorry, that was his name, excuse me. He's saying hi. He was saying his name. Okay. I'm the brother of Oluwa uh, Tosin Salu. Oluwa Toyin Salu. And I would like to thank everyone for donating and confirm that this account indeed is a legitimate account created to assist my family in this tragic event. Please stop spreading false information about the validity of this account. Thank you. So it's funny that the brother and the family... And obviously the family was not here for this little girl because there's no reason that a 19-year-old girl <coughs> should have been homeless sleeping in a church. So it's funny that they didn't take care of her. They didn't look out for her. He abused her. But now, all of a sudden, there's a GoFundMe. Let me see if I can pull up. And her GoFundMe has already raised $23,400. And once again, GoFundMe will get a percentage of that, of that young girl's life. But see, these are the conversations that y'all don't want to have because it's uncomfortable. Do you know how many kids I've had stay with me because maybe they had issues with their parents or their parents were having to move and they wanted to finish out the school year? Kids I've been knowing forever. Anytime one of my son's friends have had to stay with me, it's never been an issue for me. Because I'm always going to look out and extend a hand to young people. Because I know how it is to be homeless. I know how it is to be kicked out at a young age. Because you got pregnant. I know how that is. And I would never do that to another person. When are people in our community going to stand up? And when you see a child hurting, you take them under your wing. You take them out that situation. 
Now we want to do stuff. We have such a retroactive mentality in this society that we want to do stuff after the fact. When you see a family is struggling and they don't have anything and they're begging for help, why are they not help then? Rashard Brooks' wife was given a brand new car because I guess her car had broke down. But why wasn't she given that help before her husband, ex-husband, whatever, was killed? Those are the questions I'm asking. And y'all can try and spin whatever narrative y'all want to spin, but facts are facts. And one thing you can't do is change the facts. The truth is the truth no matter who tells it. Let me go ahead and read this super chat. Uh, what's up, Binky Bianca? Thanks for the super chat, sis. She sends $50. She says, comprehension and intelligence is rare on social media. Thank you for being one of the few YouTubers that carry themselves with class and doesn't resort to BS. We love you, queen. I love you too, sis. And thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you to everyone who just sees through the BS, who sees through the narcissistic attacks, the bullshit ad hominem attacks, the made up stuff. Thank you. We stick to facts and receipts over here. I don't have to sit here and make up anything and, and degrade people and, belitt and belittle people. That's not me. So thank you to everybody who's a critical thinker because that word is very important. Y'all can clown Mona Simone for using that word, but she's telling the truth when she talks about that. Critical thinking and what Binky Bianca just said is a rarity. Everybody on social media wants to have a herd mentality and they're out for blood and they want to cancel people. Because again, like I always tell you, cancel culture is dismissive. It's a lot easier to just say, oh, you're canceled, hashtag cancel, than actually putting your money where your mouth is. When you really cancel somebody, you don't give them views. You don't follow them. You don't buy their merch. You don't support anything that they do. But see, it's a lot harder to do that. It's easier to just say, you're canceled. Because I know half the bitches who are in my DM talking about I'm canceled, y'all hoes are watching right now. How you doing? Love for Minnesota, bitch. <laughs> it is a rarity, you guys. Pac says it's rare. People are very simple-minded and binary thinkers. Um, Noir Shanghai says narcissists and they're flying monkeys. Amen. Amen. Um, Asher sent 999 from London. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it, Ash. Asha, thank you. Um, C.T. Pang sends $10 from Canada. Says, T is an empath. You have to preserve your well-being. Put your, put your oxygen mask on first to help everyone else. Thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you. Yeah, my asthma's kicking back in, honey. But it's all good. I'm, I'm still going to talk my shit. Um, Ashley Joe says, worth, uh, worth more dead than alive reminds me of that episode of Boondocks. When the billionaire and his grandson conspired to get his security guard killed and staged a terror, uh, staged a terroristic attack. I don't remember that episode. But yeah, it's a common word. It's a common word, but they try to flip it into something nefarious. Most people are worth more dead than alive. The average citizen, the people who actually have life insurance, your life insurance probably costs way more and is worth way more than what's in your bank account. That is facts. But you know, people who don't have common sense, they'll try and spin a, a narrative that it's something bad, that I'm not just speaking facts to what it is in life. Because these are people who've never had, they don't have life insurance, they don't have anything. So they wouldn't know. So now, I got my notes here. I just wanna make sure I'm talking about everything. So now people like to spin the narrative that I don't uh, talk about white people or I only talk about black celebrity tea, which is the stupidest narrative you can spin because if you go through my catalog, you'll see why I held a lot of people accountable. There was a gentleman that came to my Instagram page. Um, he was, I guess he was a little Boosie Boo fan, honey, and he got mad. He was in his feelings. How dare you talk about Gu uh, Boosie talking about Gucci because I basically said the same thing. While I understood what Lil Boosie was trying to say, he's the wrong messenger. You can't go around the store and try to shame people about buying Gucci and tell them that they're stupid, y'all motherfuckers ain't shit. When you're the same man who sits on the internet and brags, okay, about paying grown women 
to molest your children and to take their virginity. Once you admit to something like that, your argument with Gucci is null and void. Right message, wrong messenger. And I have the right to say that about anybody who's problematic, okay? So when I said that, the little Boosie Boo fan got his feelings. Oh, you're always coming after black rappers. You didn't say shit about Johnny Depp when uh, Amber Heard lied on him. And I watch you. I, I'm a fan. I watch your podcast. And I'm thinking, like, obviously you don't watch my podcast because if you did, that was one of the first podcasts I ever did. It was one of the top, you know, the one of the first five podcasts I ever did. Matter of fact, my own homeboy told me I didn't even know who the hell Amber Heard was until you did the video slash podcast on her. I hold everyone accountable regardless of race, sexual orientation, or gender. Now, y'all can pull that game with other gossip channels, but you can't pull that over here. So let's go ahead and, and, and talk about it. What other black gossip channels held Asia Argento accountable? Miss, I'm going to start the Me Too movement. We're going to go after Harvey Weinstein only for her tea to be spilled that she was smashing a 17-year-old. How many black gossipers on this platform did a video about Asia Argenta calling her out for her hypocrisy? How many black gossipers on this platform made videos about Harvey Weinstein uh, blasting him, blasting Hillary Clinton, blasting Hollywood, and who else said Hollywood swamp needs to be drained? It's okay. I'll wait. Since I don't talk about white people, these other gossip channels on YouTube, how many of them have hit on those topics? Y'all remember Asia Argento's witch fans came for me. All her little red witches, they came for me because I was coming for their queen witch. I didn't give a shit because I'm too blessed. Ain't, can't nobody cast no spell on me. It ain't going to work. I'm too protected. So when her witches came for me, I was like, okay, whatever. It is what it is. Y'all can be mad, but the truth is the truth. She slept with a 17-year-old to try to start the Me Too movement. So now everything with her whole Me Too claim is null and void. You can't molest somebody and then cry rape. Come on now. Okay, on top of that, how many other black gossip channels made videos condemning Amber Heard and the lies that she spun on Johnny Depp. The way they tore that man's career, got him kicked off of uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, which he's been playing for years, literally ruined that man only for the tapes to come out that he did nothing wrong and that this bitch was crazy and made all this up to play victim. How many people made that video in this black sector since we want to talk? And say that I only talk about, you know, black uh, celebrities. It's okay. I'll wait. Now, uh, Carrie Bradshaw says, you and T Choice TV always talk about taboo topics. Thank you. And that is my baby right there. Shout out to Choice. We are the main ones who talk about all range of topics. We hold everybody accountable. Even in that same stream where they try to use that sound bit, that first hour was me going in and dragging white content creators and problematic makeup people in the beauty community. Have they made videos going in on them people? Doubt it. So now, on top of that, when everybody was so, oh my God, y'all need to stop being racist towards the Chinese. The Chinese ain't even do nothing. It's not called the Chinese virus. It's not called the Wuhan virus. It's the coronavirus. It's COVID-19. When everybody was screaming that shit, what did Lovely T say? I don't give a damn about a 1-800 number for the Chinese when it comes to racism and abuse. Because over there in China, they're mistreating African people. I sparked that. And then all the other blogs ran with it. And then it became a hot topic because my homegirl in China was sending me all the videos of the racism that black people were facing in China. And she's African-American. So it wasn't just, you know what I'm saying, the Africans in China. Anybody black was being discriminated against. How many of these black gossip T channels talked about that? So miss me with the hypocrisy and bullshit. I talk about a wide range of topics and I hold everybody accountable the same way. 
So you're not going to spin a narrative. You're not going to do that. I'm back in the green. Okay. We got 6,000 people here. So we got... <coughs> it looks like YouTube has stopped kicking people out. Um, D-Star says, your God-given light will always shine. Don't worry about the haters. I'm a longtime fan and always will be. Thank you so much, sis. I appreciate the super chat. Thank you for the love. And you are right, honey. That you, you can't. They're not going to dim my light. They can't destroy nothing that they didn't help build. Period. Point blank. So thank you so much, sis. Um, let me read some more. Jay Williams says, love you. Been watching you since I was pregnant with my first baby. She's three now. I have disagreed with a lot of things you said in the past, but you've always kept it real no matter what. That is enough for me. Thank you so much, sis. And that's the best part about people who are critical. We can always agree to disagree. That's just what it is. There are certain things that people are, you know, staunch on, and I just disagree with it. You know what I'm saying? For my own thing. So I just love the fact that you can take what you can from my live streams, from my videos, and the stuff that you don't dis that the stuff that you don't agree with. You just, you know, move them over. But it's no hate. There's no animosity. There's no, you know, rude behavior. I appreciate that. And you know, what I'm saying your baby is three now, so I know you've been here for a while. So that baby's a tea sipper too, honey. Because I'm sure she watches when you watch. Um, let's see here. Rachel Angel says, "My husband and I love your channel." You're the only YouTuber he will actually listen to with me. We enjoy your point of view. You see things for what they are. Uh, support from Cali. Thank you so much. And I think that's the best. Like I said in one of my streams, I love when people can get with their husbands, their boyfriends, their significant others, and just watch my videos because it sparks meaningful dialogue. You know what I'm saying? I can come out here and I can talk about everything from comedy to esoterical stuff to racism to the virus. I have a wealth of knowledge of just stuff. I don't have to just sit and talk about sexually explicit things. I don't have to just sit and talk about low vibrational stuff. We have real meaningful dialogue over here. And I love that. And I love the fact that people appreciate that. So thank you to you and your husband for supporting my channel. I really appreciate it. Um... Let's see here. Kiba Moore says, hey, sis, one of your mods been sipping tea <laughs> since 2017. You are one of the few YouTubers I watch and always rock with you. You keep being you. God, uh, God's blessing look good on you. Much love, sis. Thank you so much, um, Kiba. I appreciate it, sis, and thank you for modding as well. Um, Bree from NYC is in the house, honey. You know Bree be here every week with a super chat. Okay, Bree says, this is why I go hard for you, T. You keep it real. That bogus Me Too movement hasn't said anything about Shane Dawson and other problematic white guys who said some stick stuff about kids. Honey, you better speak on it. You better speak on I ain't heard a peep from the Me Too movement at all. So thank you. Okay, they're back to booting people, honey. Like I said, I'm probably just going to re-upload this whole stream in its entirety because it's being recorded so don't worry about it they're kicking you out um let me see here i took a lot of notes so the next thing i want to hit on how long have i been on here okay i've been on here for 48 minutes okay perfect so the next thing i want to hit on is this fake ass narrative of me being transphobic me being uh, homophobic, you know, people love to pull out the phobic, you know, anytime you speak truth. Um, but people know I'm not, okay? People clearly know that. And thank you to just everybody who's just literally, because, you know, it's always easy to focus on the negative, you know, like the dumb bitch who sent that stupid message this morning. But I also like to focus on the positive. I also like to post positive DMs that I get from people as well. And I had a lot of gay people slide into my DMs and just show genuine support. And that means a lot to me. I'm so happy you guys see through the BS. Um, this person says, I'm, hold on, is that the one? Okay. This person says, I'm glad you paid that person dust. Like spaceships and aliens, she was reaching. I had to unfollow because she does not represent the LGBTQ and properly in my opinion her lack of integrity false narratives and manipulation will be her downfall i hope you have a blessed day you are a blessing and my inspiration in life and then you know i replied back to them with the message so that really cheered me up that made me feel good so thank you for that message 
Um, somebody else wrote, they said, hey, T, I've been a fan of yours for a few months. Um, you see me in the comment sections, and sometimes I just wanted to say hi. Sometimes, hold on. And I just wanted to say you've been such an inspiration to me because I didn't really have that confidence in me before I started watching your channel. I love you so much. You mean a lot to me, even though we haven't met in real life from a gay boy from wretched ass Florida. So that was a lot. That just that meant a lot to me this morning just to see the support. Um, let me see here. And then somebody else I've been talking to for a long time, and I had no idea, but when all this came out, when all this mess happened, they came out and they told me that they were trans. And we been, we literally talk like every other day, like this is my home girl. I had no idea, I just thought, you know, it was a woman, you know, whatever. And so she came out and told me, and she let me know, like, I know you're not transphobic. Me and you talk all the time. You've never said anything out of pocket in the DMs, you know, and she had, she loved my podcast. So this was a message that she had sent me. So she was saying, LOL, you never knew this about me, but I'm trans. LOL, I was not offended. And Timothy blocked me years ago after I dragged them for a comment about a fellow trans person. I'm trying to find the video now for you where Miss Mamas used the word, uh, the T word, uh, weapon, Uzi game it. Oh, weaponizing it, okay. And then she was like, ooh, baby, I got to tell you. So then she sent me the video. So like I said, so many people see through the BS. It's not even funny. And I just, I thank everybody who just, you know, support me and, you know, who saw through the nonsense, who listened to my full podcast, who knew I was not being any type of phobic, period. Okay? It, it means a lot. So I got, I got more. Because I just, I don't, I don't like when people try to spin a bullshit narrative. Where is my, oh Lord, I thought I had it. Oh. Okay. My phone. There's a lot of people that I talk to in my DMs that have literally become not even friends, like almost like family. You know, we talk about a lot of stuff, a wide range of people. So if, I, if I'm such a homophobic, transphobic person, why do these people talk like to me? He's a little wears glasses like me. Let me just show, play you some. Around my age, he looks almost like me. He's a little bit darker. He wears glasses like me. We're both Aquarius. We're both homosexual. And, and it's like we're twins. Like everything we do is the same. And I was just freaking out because I was like, ever since you said something about twins, I've just been going and going like like I said I I I was all into when Hitler was um, looking up twins and and doing experiments on them and stuff. I didn't approve of that, but I was very So, I have deep conversations in my DMs with people from all walks of life. And I hope you guys don't mind me sharing this. I'm not going to say y'all's names, but it just, you know, for people to try and spin a narrative to me is just ridiculous. So, we're going to combat all of those narratives. There's a lot of people that I speak to from all walks of life. Matter of fact, when I posted the other day on uh, my Instagram page, let me see if I can show y'all this here, that somebody I was talking to in the DM, and it made me so happy. This was before I had made my page private, because, and this was before all this mess. I had already made my page private like two days before this. Just because, you know, like people just trolling, you know, people just want to argue with you over stupid shit. And I had posted this the other day. Let me see if I can find it here. Give me just a second. Because like I said, I'm, I'm here to, you know, clear up misconceptions and bullshit. Show you all my display capture. So on my display capture, this is what I wrote. I wrote this a day ago. It says, I get a lot of rude bullshit messages and rude comments on IG, but it's always refreshing to open positive DMs from people who get it and get me. Thank you for the wonderful voice chat dialogue. It made my night and it lifted my spirits. And then I went on to write this. 
you can, I mean, I didn't write this, but I posted this um, picture. It says, you cannot force someone to comprehend a message that they're not ready to receive. Still, you must under, still, you must never underestimate the power of planting a seed. So that is what I posted literally the other day on, um, on my Instagram page. So let me, let me share with you guys the person I was talking to who, who uplifted my spirits since I'm such this horrible person. Give me just a second here. And I, and I feel like nobody... I'm muting it so I can find exactly this part. So just give me a second. And that's why it's very important to stay vigilant. And yet you are right. I, I am very spiritually sensitive. Even though I'm gay, you know, the, the stereotype is that, you know, we, we turn from God, but... I'm a Christian first, like, you know, that that's my spirituality. I, I believe in Jesus. That's my first and foremost identity is as. So that's just a snippet of our conversation. That's the conversation that really uplifted me in my DMs. And that was coming from a, a young gay gentleman who is also spiritually sensitive, a, a empath. So I speak to people from all walks of life. So I'm never going to allow somebody to spin a narrative that I'm a mean person, that I'm a hateful person, that I hate gay people, that I hate trans people. That is bullshit. I treat everyone with respect who treats me with respect. You bring me positive energy, you'll get nothing but that from me. You bring me love, you'll get nothing but that from me. Okay? You bring me bullshit, you'll get that right back. Okay? I go off of energy. You know how many people will say you shouldn't like this person or you shouldn't like that person because they're problematic or because, you know, they're, they're, they did this and they did that. But me and that person were able to find some type of rapport with each other. So for me, I can see past their bullshit and I can get to know them for who they are. You know, so it's very sad when people try to go out their way to spin false narratives that are not true. It really is. And I had one more I wanted to play. Because I talk about all types of stuff in my DM. From esoterical stuff to just, you know, normal things, uh, just deep conversations. But I, I talk to so many people, and I get to know so many people from different walks of life. It's crazy. I'm muted so I can find the part. This young man came into my DM because he sent me a really dope picture of a rainbow in his city. And this is probably one of the most beautiful pictures of a rainbow I've ever seen. And so I told him, I said, you know what's so ironic? I didn't know him. He just sent me this picture. was like, hey, T, I want you to look at this. I hope it cheers you up. I said, what's so funny is that I saw a rainbow not even two days ago outside of Walmart. And I sent him a DM showing him the rainbow, okay, that I took. And he sent me a picture, and we were just talking about rainbows. But this is what he left in my um, DM. Going to be, like, a good day or something good luck. So um, I hope you're doing well. I love your content. Um, you have been getting me through the quarantine uh, this year. I literally watch all of your live streams. Um, you are probably the only new source that I ever trust. <laughs> Real talk. So thank you for all the work that you do um, as a fellow empath. Uh, God bless you, hon. And I hope that God is watching you, and I hope that God is protecting you, and I pray for you. God bless you, hon. And that meant so much to me. See, when you radiate positive energy, when you're a genuinely good person, those are the DMs that come through. Those are the conversations that I have with people. 
I bet you half these folks can't even play a DM like that. And th that was just three different people in the past few days. Three different random people in the past few days. Half these folks ain't never got no DMs like that. Positive voice chats, prayers, words of encouragement, pictures of rainbows. Honey, God don't play about me. I'm blessed and highly favored. Can't nobody ever destroy what they did not help build on this good Sunday. Period, point blank. So anybody spreading rumors, making stuff up, this video is to dispel all the BS. I don't, I don't, I don't play when it comes to trying to make up a false narrative. It's not okay. Don't sit here and lie and say that I said that, oh, <laughs> these black men are worth more dead than alive, and then you don't play the full context. Don't sit here and say that I'm homophobic and transphobic, but you don't listen to the full podcast. You don't know what my relationships are with different people. So thank you guys so much. Like I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I was going to keep it real. I'm always going to stay what's on my mind. I'm always going to speak my truth. And that's just what it is. Let me go ahead and read these super chats. Okay, look at Kris Jenner, honey. <laughs> she got Kris Jenner's her icon pick. I know that's right. Kris Jenner's by her shit. I ain't mad at you. You know, most folks use like Queen Beyonce or, <laughs> or Kylie Jenner. She got Kris Jenner. I'm not mad, Queen B. She says, I found out my friend is a fan of you. Hey, Ariel. Thank you, sis. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. That is too funny. Um, let's see here. Famously D says, love you, lovely T. I finally caught your live. Keep spreading love, truth, and beauty. Been rocking with you the entire 10, almost 11 years. Hey, hey. <laughs> You're definitely, definitely, definitely an OG tea sipper. So thank you so much for just, you know, Honey, sticking stick in here with me through all the ups, all the downs, all the drama, you know, all the BS, you know, it's very much appreciated. You know, we, we've seen we've seen this song and dance before. So I'm just so grateful for like, you know, my real tea sippers who just went hard. And y'all did, because that's why, you know, when, when you when y'all was speaking truth and trying to, you know, explain to that person like, OK, you totally got this misconstrued. It's not even like that. What they do, they started, you know, uh, closing down comments, deleting people, blocking people, deleting comments, you know? So it just, it just shows you the truth irritates people's demons. And that's just all it is. That's it. That's all. So I just have to say what I had to say. Um, let's hear hot mama. I love that name. Hot Mama 298 sends $20. She says, I'll always support you T. Thank you for doing what you do. I can never believe that you're homophobic. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. You know, and it's sad that I even had to reiterate that because, again, before it became cool to be a YouTube commentator, because remember, back back then, you see what Shane Dawson's going through. Back then, everybody was doing skits. I was one of the few people besides, like, you know, um, Phil DeFranco and what was his name? The other white boy, he was, what the buck? You know, he did commentary on celebrities advice show and a few other people you know that were doing commentary at the time most people back then were doing skits if you go to my news channel i was probably one if not the only straight females doing news stories that also affected the lgbt community when those two young boys all those years ago got burnt with hot water because the father walked in on them and he threw hot water on them and burnt them to third degree, you know, burnt them with third degree burns. And people were sitting there trying to excuse it. Tell my, oh, well, it don't matter. They shouldn't have been having gay sex in this house. I had their back. I said, if the, if the genders were reversed, if that was him and his girlfriend, the father would have never done that. It is not okay. Nobody deserves to be abused, burned, you know what I'm saying, and go through skin grafts because of their sexual orientation. I came up and I spoke up. When the shit wasn't cool. How many of these other black gossip gurus can say that they were doing that way back then before there was a check to be had? I'll wait. Um, Dominic Walton says, you speak the truth and hold people accountable. Being unbiased, I'm gay. And I saw that same live and I knew you were not being mean or malicious. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. 
And I know you've been here a few times, honey, so thank you for the super chat. Um, Arthur uh, Flex says, T, what did you think about Shane's apology video? Um, I dropped the video last night. I was up editing until like 2 in the morning, so I did a whole breakdown on the whole Shane Dawson situation. You might not be aware of it, so just go ahead and check it out. It's on my channel. So I did speak on that. Um, but thank you for the super chat. Uh, Soul Vibe says, we support you. Keep glowing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Malia Nimjambong, sorry if I mispronounce it, says, hey, T, love you. There's a show called Love, Victor, where one of the main characters talks about driving drunk to Wendy's Richard Brooks predictive program. Oh, programming. Oh, wow. One of the characters talks about driving drunk to Wendy's. That's the Richard Brooks predictive programming. I'm going to have to look that up. I've never heard of this show, but I'm going to have to look that up. That sounds interesting. A lot of this stuff is predictive programming. It was something else somebody sent me. It was a cartoon. And in that cartoon, they were beating up this kid, like a black kid, and it was a cop. And basically in that cartoon, they were putting him in a chokehold and kneeling on him. So a lot of this stuff is, is pre-programmed. A lot of this stuff was meant to happen. That's why I've been saying from day one, <coughs> a lot of this stuff is esoterical. And it's way deeper, you know what I'm saying, than any of us can even imagine. So thank you for the super chat. Um, Rhea says, I'm late to the chat, but I finally caught your live. I love you. have been watching you for five to six years now. You're definitely the best YouTube in these streets. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, London Thomas <laughs> sent four ninety nine says, speaking of newscast with a bunch of eyeballs and LOL. You know, I seen them. Uh, it's not a meme. It's a picture, and I probably post it. But what I found funny because I know what you're getting at. That's very esoterical what you just put down, newscast. Somebody sent me a picture, and I never really thought about it, but on one side is a spell casting, like book, you know, like spell casting books, rituals, and on the other side, they have a picture of broadcasting, and they basically turned it into a meme, and they said, both cast spells. Stay woke. <laughs> so I definitely get what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Newscast, broadcast casting things like that so thank you for the super chat um kb sent a sticker for 19.99 she says you are amazing thank you sis you're amazing too thank you for coming through i really really appreciate it um let's see here and crisco says t never stop doing what you do my generation is not having this bs we get our information from people like you in January 2020, when no news channel was reporting on C-19, I watched the cover from you. Um, I watch you cover it daily. Thank you, love from New Jersey. Thank you so much, Ann Crisco. Thank you. You know, and that's how I know my platform and my voice is powerful. Because, you know what I'm saying, I talk about real stuff. And I hold everybody accountable. And I talk about things that are not cool to talk about. I didn't make a dime off of those you know, C-19 videos. And it wasn't about that. It was about getting the information out to the people. How many of these gossip gurus, you know what I'm saying, made videos when it wasn't the hot topic, when it wasn't the trend? I made whole breakdowns. Had to disguise the lady's voice and everything because I knew with my platform, this information was valuable and it needed to get out. I was one of the only YouTubers to talk about the Lotus situation. With the Lotus when they were ravishing Kenya. Well, now do you guys know those same locusts? They have finally traveled to India. And now India is dealing with the horrible infestation of locusts. I was warning about this back in January. So thank you so much. I'm so, I'm so grateful that my message is getting received by people. By the people who need to hear it. So I appreciate that. Um, let's see here. Um, Andrea Elizabeth says, have you heard, have you heard of dust from the Sahara might be locusts coming over here? Isn't that funny that that's your super chat and I just got them talking about locusts? See, that's that synchronicity. Um, 
what I've heard from one of my mods who lives in Florida, if you guys don't know, um, on my Instagram page, I had posted what was going down in the Caribbean. Because I post a lot of, you know, valuable information. I don't just post celebrity news and gossip and bullshit on my Instagram. I also post world news. So what a lot of people are not aware of is in the Caribbean, they're dealing with horrible dust from the Sahara. This is one of the worst dust storms ever. Let me show you on my uh, desktop. Give me a second. Give me a second here. So I want to make sure y'all can see it. So the, uh, the Caribbean, they're dealing with um, a monster Saharan dust storm. So I'm just going to kind of talk as this is playing. But basically, um, if, as you guys can see in this picture, the dust is so thick out there that you can't even see the sky. It's gotten that bad. And a lot of people from the Caribbean, they were coming through to the chat. Um, if you see it, a lot of people from Jamaica, uh, Trinidad and Tobago, um, were just commenting and saying that they're dealing with this. So... It's very important, you know, that we talk about other things besides salacious bullshit. So anyways, they were initially saying when I posted this, that was three days ago. If you're not aware, that dust has now moved to Florida. And in certain parts of Florida, put a teacup if you're in Florida and you guys are dealing with the dust. Because one of my mods, when I talked to her um, the other day, she said it is really dusty. It's the baddest that they've seen in years. If, if ever. And all that dust is coming from the Caribbeans. Okay. So, Jay Phil is in Florida. Says, yep, we saw it here in Florida. Gabrielle. Yeah, I have. I'm telling you, I got a lot of damn ratchet ass Florida followers, honey. Look at all them damn teacups. Okay, in Georgia, too. Okay, I didn't even realize Georgia was getting hit. Okay. So, this is real. Th this is real. And then, and then China... You know, the epicenter of all the bullshit, they're dealing with mass floodings. And they're hoping that the what? What did I show y'all the other day on my Instagram? That the George Dam does not break. How convenient that the dams in China that's looking to possibly break is called the George Dam. Another 20, con another 20 coincidence? I think not. I think not. They're dealing with serious stuff there. Let me um, show y'all. Just a second. <clears throat> the George's Dam. So this is the name of it. China's three George's Dam could collapse, exports, experts warn. So it, it's that bad right now in China. All this flooding. But no, nobody's really talking about this. What, what black gossip channels are talking about this and posting this on their Instagram and calling out the CCP? It's okay, I'll wait. Okay, so you guys just saw a snippet of that. So yeah, all this stuff is happening around us. Um, Smiley Lightfoot says, um, Smiley's a mod and they sent $10, says, man, I've been watching you for years, ever since the Stevie Wonder intro, I'm a trans man, you only ever show love and respect to people, only hate when holding down their face to, they only hate you when you're holding their face to task, so F them. Thank you so much, Smiley, I appreciate it, and I remember when you had left the comment, when I had the, um, the... Mr. Jax, he's a trans man, and I had him on my show. We had did a show, and he came on there to basically speak of his experience as a trans man. And I remember seeing your comment where you said that you too were a trans man. So thank you so much, and thank you for the super chat. Thank you for the love. And that's what it is. <clears throat> if I'm talking about people that people don't like, if they're not that person, you know, if they're not team such and such, they don't care. They're here for it. But the second you talk about someone that they like, oh, it's an issue. You know, it just, it does not make any sense. It's just really sad that people can't just, you know, listen to stuff independently without getting in their feelings. It's no different than when I had to hold, you know, the Mexican community accountable. When they were dragging me for talking about 6 9 Don't you ever talk about 6 9 F you and da-da-da-da. I said, oh, hell no. We're not going to have that. 
Because when I talk about black issues and black dysfunction, y'all are here for that tea. Just like with white folks when I've had to check them. Don't come and sip on the black tea, but then when I'm talking about your favorite white person, now y'all want to cast witch spells and shit. Now you're mad that I'm going for, you know, that I'm calling out Asia Argento and Rose Godwin. It don't work that way. I keep the same energy with everybody. Yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, China's definitely going through it at this time. They're they're going through it. Um, Let's see here. Shorty sends $35, says, thank you for your vids. Did you see Paris talk about Toyi? She did a good breakdown. No, I haven't seen it. I'll go ahead and check that out when I get some time. Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, Dreamy True says, hey, T, been a tea sipper since 2017. Love your honesty, your positivity, and your raw emotion that you aren't afraid to show. You always make me laugh. Sometimes I listen to your videos <laughs> as, a bed <laughs> as a bedtime story. <laughs> much love. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And, you know, and, and that's what it is. Like, I've, I've never had to hide my emotions. You know what I'm saying? If I'm happy, people know it. If I'm sad, if I'm crying, people know it. If I'm angry, people know it. You know what I'm saying? But I try not to show the angry side, honey, because, you know, angry is an emotion that's just, it's wasted energy. So I try not to even let myself get really angry or really bothered anymore. Trust me, it's it's, it's a learning skill, okay? It's not easy because sometimes you just want to beat a bitch ass. But you know what I'm saying? It's, it's just not worth that energy, you know? So I, I'm glad that I can just be open and honest and just share myself with the world and just share how I feel about stuff and give my opinion. Regardless if people agree or disagree, when I give my opinion on something, it's rooted in fact, okay? And the only time you'll ever see me take something down or walk something back is if the fact is incorrect. I will always take accountability. So if I post something and it's not correct, I have no problem taking it down, saying, you know what, that wasn't correct, I apologize, and that's it, that's all. But as far as if I'm speaking truth about something, you'll never, you'll never, ever, ever, ever get me to walk back the truth, period. If I said it, I said it, period. So thank you so much. Um, Alexandra sent 1999 says, hey T, spreading positive vibes. Thank you, and I'm definitely here for the positive vibes, sis. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you for the super chat. I truly appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Um, let me see if I can pronounce that. Kaiomashi? Kaiomashe? Kaiomashe? I know I probably butchered it, and I'm sorry. But I got Powell right. That's the last name. Thank you so much for the super chat. She says, hey, auntie, my brother was just in Alabama, and he said it's bad down there too. And my name is Keo Miche. You know what, y'all know me too damn well. Cause y'all know I butcher names. <laughs> Cause y'all know I butcher names. She done broke her name down. She says, my name is Keo Miche. I love it, I love it. Thank you so much. Cause I was like, dang, how do I pronounce that? That's a beautiful name. So it's happening in Alabama too. Like all of that stuff. and. And that's why I say we're like all one big circle of light. You know, so easy to think that what happens in one per part of the world does not affect you. But it does. I mean, think about how we're so connected now to China. You know, everything that took place in China has totally affected globally the entire world. So everything that was taking place in uh, Kenya, you know, with the locusts, now it's affecting India. Just like with the whole bat situation that was going on in Australia, you know, those bats are now affecting other places. And now that dust is going, in, now that dust has come from the Sahara to the Caribbean, and now it's here in the United States. But who else is talking about that? It's okay. I'll wait. <laughs> Shout out to Cat Williams, honey. He needs to come back. I love him. Um, sweet, and uh, sweet and lovable Shaw. I like that name. Says T always keeps it 100, like it or not. Facts, honey. Um, let's see here. We got a lot of comments. Okay, so I've been on here for an hour and 18 minutes. Um, I'm going to get off here in a bit. Uh, Beauty Shop says, I'm one of your blind supporters. <laughs> Aw. She says, I freaking love you. You don't even know what. She said, I don't even know what you look like. But I assume that my Leo energy and your Leo energy just mesh. That is so sweet. 
Thank you so much. You know, and that's so funny. Like, I always say, you never know who's watching you, you know, what issues people might have. You know, like when I did the video about the blind stripper a few months ago, and then to find out she was a tea sipper. You know, she sent me a whole DM, like, geeked up and excited. She's like, oh, my God, I watch you. Well, she was like, no, I don't watch you, but I listen to you. And, you know, she was so excited that I made a video on her. So that means a lot to me. It means a lot to me that people just are able, even if you don't have sight, you're able to hear my words and feel my energy. So, yes, honey, Team Leo, Leo season coming up, and I cannot wait. But I'm also nervous because I'm just like, what is July going to hold for us? Because, honey, May... It started off good, then it just ended up being a disaster with everything that happened to George Floyd. And then June, honey, with the riots and just all the chaos. I'm <coughs> I'm very nervous to see what ends up happening in July. I just am. And especially with the 4th, I want everyone to be careful. We're dealing with a lot of solar um, eclipse and things like that. And then, like I've been telling you guys in the past streams, I've been hearing rumblings of police officers wanting to call out, wanting to protest on the 4th. So just a heads up. Be very, very mindful of your surroundings because if some things go down, they may not be there. Um, Sephora C says July hurricanes and earthquakes. No, we don't want to claim that in the month of July. Okay, we just want to have fun during Leo season. Okay, we're not going to claim that. You know, hopefully nothing gets too bad. You know, who knows? But I just want everybody to be careful. Um, Naomi says, the purge. You never know. Um, C-Pain says, did you say blind stripper? Yeah, it's, it's a video I did about a young lady in Florida. She's a blind stripper, but she has so much, you know, tenacity and... You know, just, I don't, well, I don't even know she'd be able to strip anymore because, what you know, with the C virus, all that is probably shut down. But, no, she's just, like, the sweetest girl. You know, she's been through a lot, and, you know, she's a strong woman. You know, she didn't let her disability stop her. She felt like she wasn't getting enough money from disability checks. So, honey, she went and grabbed her cane and her damn, you know, high heel shoes. And she, you know, they taught her, you know, they moved her to where the pole was, and she felt it, and you know what I mean? It's been on and popping ever since. So, yeah. She's, she's definitely, it was, it was such a funny video. It went viral a few months ago. Um, let's see here. Uh, Karimar Casado says, hey, T, been watching you since I was 19. I'm now 24 with a nine-month-old little girl. When she naps, I catch up on the T. That's awesome, and congratulations. Honey, y'all be having me ready to have baby fever. CJ Family Show, thank you for the super chat. I had posted this adorable baby on Instagram, and I legit was like, yo, I want another one. He was so cute. He was so adorable. Um, Shelby says, I'm going to start canning. Y'all better get y'all food stocked up. Preppers seem sane now. Girl, who you telling? You know on that show, Preppers was my show back in the day when it was on. But it's the truth. I want to learn canning. Honey, I need to learn damn gardening. Y'all know me and my little okra plant, my mint plant. I want to have a whole damn garden. You know, that's, that's going to be like my eventual goal. But yeah, we do need to learn stuff like, you know, canning and things like that. Because um, the price of groceries is going up. The price of meat is going up. Everything is going up. But the problem is a lot of people are still not even fully back to work. So that's the problem. So we're going to have to really start thinking about canning, freezing things up, you know, getting canned goods and, and, you know, saving them for a rainy day because a lot of stuff is getting ready to go up, especially come this fall. This, this whole virus situation was deeper than just people dying, was deeper than just people getting sick. This was a way to tank the economy. And we're going to start feeling the effects of that. We've been feeling it, but it's going to get worse. This was a way to really destabilize the economy. Because like I said, once they eventually let people go back to doing, you know, their so-called normal activities, people will be ready for that vaccine. And that's the hopes. That we put you in such a destitute situation that you'll be lining up for that mark. So, yeah, it's, it's crazy. 
So, yeah, definitely stock up. If you don't have a deep freezer, try and get a deep freezer, um, you know, in your home just so you can stock up on food, fish, vegetables, things like that. So, yeah, it's going to get real. Look, hold on, hold on. Somebody said something about God. Ms. Jones says, God said he will send signs. It's up to us to recognize them and see them. Amen. That is the truth. God sends signs to us all the time. It's just, are we willing to, you know, to take in those signs and willing to understand them? So, yeah, we get sent signs all the time. And even something like your gut instinct. That's why I always tell people, don't ignore that damn gut instinct. That gut instinct then saved me from a many a situation. When something is telling you to go left instead of right, you better go left. Because that ain't nothing but God trying to save you from whatever is trying to take you down, down that road. So that's the truth. Um, Michelle Watson says, I miss most of the live stream, but I'll catch the playback. Just wanted to show support because I love you and love what you do. Thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat. And yes, the playback will be available. And I'm also going to upload the stream in the event that was freezing and booting people off and all that nonsense. Um, Mary Sella sent a bunch of hearts and a $5 super chat. Thank you for the super chat, sis. Thanks for the love. Um, Kiyoka says, hey, T. <laughs> Look, everybody trying to break down their name. Hey, T, my name is Kiyoka. Okay, thank you. I say Kiyoka, but it's Kiyoka. She says, but I am the holder of the... Oh, okay. She says, I'm the holder of the Breezy Beautiful account. Thank you for the shout out earlier. When I saw that comment, I had to say something. Stay blessed. No, thank you. Thank you. That means so much to me that I didn't even have to explain myself. And it felt good that I didn't have to come on there and defend myself. It felt good that you just understood it. You understood the message of the live stream. You understood what I was trying to say. And you refused to take a 30 second sound bite and just discard me. So thank you for going up against that person and letting them know, like, you're an idiot. You need to go and watch the stream. That's not what she said, and you're not going to lie on her and spin that false narrative. So thank you so much, and thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. You know, no matter how many, you know, no matter what people try to do, the truth will always prevail. The truth will always outshine a lie, period, point blank. Um, let's see here. Emily Lullaby says, hey, T, been watching you since... The love and hip hop reviews. I love your honesty, sense of humor, love from a fellow Leo. Hashtag Leo gang. Hey, thank you so much, sis. Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it. Yeah, I remember I used to do the love and hip hop reviews. They were fun for a while, honey. Ariel Angel. I love that name. So you must be from the UK because you got the little E in front of your $15. She says, keep up the amazing content. Love you. I love you too. And thank you so much. Thank you for coming through and supporting. Um, Push Nail Sense 499 says, hey T, you look beautiful. Is that your hair? No offense. <laughs> just want to know. Um, just know that your real hair is really long. Thank you so much for the super chat. No, this is not my hair. This is a wig, honey. Just a simple wig. But my real hair, yeah, it's, 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 it's titty length. My real hair sits right here. You know, but I like to give my real hair a break. But yeah, no, this is a wig, honey. It's a wig. <laughs> but thank you. Um, let's see here. Say Cooper Lennis says, hey, T, I've been watching you since 2014. You always keep it real. Amen. And thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you. Um, Desiree Sam 499, she says, love you, T. You're my sister, my head. Been watching your videos since I moved to my city in 2011. Didn't know anybody. I appreciate you. Wow. Thank you so much. It means a lot that people have been down here, been down with me. You know what I'm saying? On YouTube for so long. And like y'all have watched me grow. Y'all have watched me, you know, move and go through stuff and go through a divorce and just go through all types of stuff. But at the end of the day, I'm still here standing strong. When other people who've been here for 10 plus years are falling by the wayside because all their fuck we done caught up to them. <laughs> Shane. <laughs> Others. You know what I'm saying? I'm still here standing. Because at the end of the day, it's never been about numbers. It's about integrity. It's about speaking truth to power. It's about not being ashamed of anything I put on the internet. So I thank you guys for being here to support me over the over these years. It means a lot to me. So thank you. Um, let's see here. CJ Family. Okay, he sent another super chat. He says, we just found out yesterday <laughs> that the ice cream truck... <laughs> 
excuse me, is a racist song. It said N word love. Hold on, it says N word love watermelon. Ha ha ha. What do you think about that? Somebody sent me a video. I need my damn inhaler. Um, somebody sent me a video of somebody confronting the ice cream man, and they're basically like, oh. You can't play that song. You need to get rid of that song. And then the dude starts singing. And he was like, niggers love watermelon, nigger. And I was just like, wow, I didn't know that. Like, I just seen the video. Somebody sent in my DM. I didn't know that the Ice Cream Man song was based off of that. So, again, we learn stuff every day. You know, I'm not all knowing. Hell no. Nah. I learned just as much from you guys as you guys learned from me. But, yeah, I did not. Did you guys know that? And I love the Ice Cream Man, honey. I'm here for all his treats. So, you know. I was shocked. I was shocked. I didn't know that. It's sad how many things have like a racial, you know what I'm saying, connotation. Oh, now it says I'm glitching. Oh, so when I started singing that song, it started glitching. It's all good because I'm going to re-upload the full live, so don't worry. Um, As soon as I started glitching, how you going to try and glitch my shit and I'm black? I'm not saying it in a racist way. Come on, YouTube. Andrew Holdley sends $10. Thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate you. Thank you. Marlon Harrison says, hey, T, I'm just here to send love before the BET Awards come up. In my Tupac voice, got to keep your head up. Thank you. I would definitely keep my head up. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming through, and thanks for sending another super chat. So let's see. I'm going to get ready to get up off of here because YouTube is tripping. We got close to 7,000 people in here. I know they were booting people earlier. Um, I've been on here for an hour and a half, so I'm going to get ready to get off. Let me read these last few Super Chats, and I'm out. Um, Jane Err sends five. She says, hey, T, my name is Michelle. Thank you for helping me through my tough times. I was laid off last week and got a job two days later. God is good. Love you. Thank you so much for the super chat. And yes, God is good. And I'm so happy you were able to get another job. So that is amazing. Thank you so much for just watching and supporting my channel. It means a lot to me. Um, let's see here. Uh, Daniela Normil says, love you, T. Been watching since 2016. The storm is also in Haiti. It was darkness for three days. I'm also Leo and an attack empath and love your message and energy. Keep doing what you do, boo. You are the truth. Thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat. Um, so they're going through it in Haiti. So that's somebody right there letting you guys know for three days there was darkness. Do you guys understand? And I don't want to get too deep because I need to get up off of here. Um, this is Bible prophecy playing before our eyes. I mean, just think about all the stuff that's going on. The locusts. You know what I'm saying? That's a plague. Food prices are going up, which will cause famine. Dust storms, where there's three days of darkness. I sound like I'm living in the Bible right now. This is all stuff that was playing out in the Bible. You know, epidemics, pandemics, people dying. The, look, at the, look at the divide in our country. Right versus left. The Democrats versus the Republicans. The police versus the people. It's like it, it, this this energy that's just been, you know, permeating over the past few months has caused so much just chaos and destruction and divide. It's really sickening. It's really sad. The devil's really busy. It really is. But thank you for the super chat, sis. Um, Janessa Payne says, T, I've been watching you for four years now. I love your content and will continue to support your channel. Love you. I love you too, and thank you so much. Thank you. So this is the last one. Um, <laughs> the Weave of a Nightmare. They sent a $5 sticker, and they said, keep it up. So thank you guys so much. Thank you to everyone who came through today, you know what I'm saying, who came to watch the stream, who came to support me, who saw through the bullshit, you know, who sent me words of positivity, encouragement, and love. Thank you to everybody who used their common sense. Um, their integrity, their discernment, who went to go listen to the full podcast. Thank you to everyone who watched my live stream and, you know what I'm saying, did not allow a 30-second clip taken out of context to sway their decision of who I am as a person. You know, when you have real integrity and real character, can't nobody crush that. They've tried, honey. They've tried their, their damnedest, and they've all failed. 
So thank you guys once again for joining me today. It means a lot to me. Um, I'll go ahead and re-upload the stream, you know, just in the event YouTube is on some BS with the playback. Um, but, yeah, it just means so much to me. So thank you guys again. I'm going to go ahead and log out. I'm sorry if I didn't get to read everybody's super chat. Um, we got one more. Big Sense, $10 from Canada. He says, I want to say that I'll be damned if anybody comes from my auntie. T, YT is trying to censor my super chat. But don't know that the LGBT loves you, T. Love from Canada. Check your DMs. Thank you. And then on that note, we're going to end on a positive note. I know they got love for me because I got love for them. And it means a lot to me. So thank you so much. And thank you to everybody who saw through the BS, honey. That, that means just the most to me. So on that note, you guys, I'm out. We'll stream again probably, um, if not, what is today? So probably Tuesday. I'll do another live stream. And we'll find some more topics. Um, I dropped a video yesterday about, you know, Shane. So if you haven't seen that, make sure you guys check that out. So once again, if I was not able to read your super chat, I always go back and, you know, reread them. But thank you so much, you guys, for the love, the support, just the positive energy, you know. So once again, folks can't tear down what they didn't help build, period, point blank. And y'all live by that model. Don't let nobody tear you down. Don't let nobody tell your story or try to tell your story. You know what I'm saying? And just realize that every level, every, every you know, staircase you climb, you climb, there's a new devil waiting with new bags of tricks and they're not going to prosper. So thank you guys.